Hello, welcome pen friends. This is the August edition of Chris's Inked Pens. I finally made my decisions. It was really hard, except I had, of course, it was really easy because I had two new pens to try out, but it was a little bit difficult because there were so many inks I wanted to try out this this month, but I'd like to kind of narrow it down to the eight uh, every month. That makes me really learn more about each ink and kind of concentrate with my letter writing. So here goes. I'm going to show you the pens, and then we're going to go ahead and um, look at the ink panel so you can see each of the inks I chose. And then I'll do a quick writing sample, and we'll flip back to the report card for, for July, uh, how it went with the pens that I had inked up in July 2020. So, first up is the new to me, um, then, that was a weird thing to say. My new pen uh, that was an anniversary gift, which is the Moon Man M600S, and I did go, and this is the Tiger's, Tiger's Eye Edition, or Finish, and I just, oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? Um, that was our 35th anniversary, and uh, this is a present from Manuel. So, it, I put um, the Goulet Black Broad Nib on it. I knew I'd be happy with that, and that's and it looks really nice. It may fa have found a permanent home that nib. So next up is a also and there I don't know why I want to say new to me like like as if it's a used car or something. Uh, brand new uh, Twisby Diamond 580 in the purple, which was a a wicked surprise to me that a pen friend had it sent from Goulet Pens for me and thank you so much. I, I'm still kind of stunned about this because this was on my Christmas list um, and it, it came with a stub nib which is one that I have not tried in the Diamond 580s. I have tried a stub on the Eco and I've tried it on a Go but it's just gorgeous and I'm gonna really enjoy this pen. I did notice there was a big difference in the grip section, let's see if I can get that up high enough. I'm not really sure if I can show you. The grip section, how they're making it now, has texture. But I'm having camera trouble, so it's going to be hard. But right here has kind of a texture, and it made a big difference, I noticed already. Like, my fingers want to go ahead and stick on there. You stay on there rather than slide. But that's probably for another time when I do a review or something. But Okay, next up is the Twisby Eco in yellow and I do have this in a broad nib that's how I ordered it and I don't change those nibs around it's easier to change the Diamond 580 nibs around I don't want to hurt a feed so I personally haven't gotten brave enough I've seen people do it right on camera and they pull and have no trouble but I, I haven't done that um, so next up is the Twisby Eco Clear, and this is the one with a medium nib on it. Uh, one of my very favorite pens. Okay, and then next is the Diplomat. They have their, their branding going this way, so Diplomat Magnum. This is the Prismatic Purple. It's also called the John Doe or something like that because it looks blue, but it also can look very purple depending on what your background is and how you're holding the pen. Uh, this has a broad nib on it. <clears throat> okay, then next up is one you're very familiar with. <laughs> my, uh, It's getting a little bit war-torn here. My Lamy Vista. In fact, I was just thinking I, I probably need to get one that isn't, you know, cleaned and used daily for ink testing so that I don't miss it so much. But for August, I'm going to use this. Um, it and I did slip uh, keep the broad nib on it at first I was going to go with the uh, oh you can almost see what that is because <laughs> you can see particles in there um, I was going to go with the fine nib but I decided to keep going with the broad nib since I'm not going to need this in July uh, for anyway that's another story <laughs> uh, okay and then this is my Twisby Diamond 580 that I first, that I got, at, it was my first Diamond 580. And what I did was I recently, with uh, Channel Allowance Money, ordered a broad nib unit for it. It's really cool because this whole nib unit, just uh, you grasp it and turn it. Well, it, I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, you can also use a little gripper to do it. But it, the whole thing comes off and then the collar uh, is replaced back on and you could change your nib unit, which is so handy. But I had not had a uh, stub nib in the Diamond 580 
yet. And so now I um, have got a medium, the original medium nib unit, the broad nib, and the stub nib. So that gives quite a range. Okay, then last but not least is my Twisby Go in the Sapphire. And uh, I have, uh, I think it's a medium nib. I mean, yeah, it's a medium nib on this one. There was a very specific reason why. We'll get into that later. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, meet you on the other side where we will look at the ink panel. There. Okay, if you hear strange noises, I do share this office with my four-legged friend Coco, and he seems to be baking right now. But <laughs> Okay, so first up for ink, I chose uh, Robert Oster Gold Antiqua. Uh, I think it's a gorgeous ink. I The sample came from Pen Friend KS. And uh, I just love it. Look at the complexity coming out. You can see that even from the distance that as I, you know, as you look at the panel here. And then next is an old favorite, Tasha Murasaki. It's a beautiful, vibrant purple. It has excellent flow. I already know that. Um, that first came to me in Ink Flight nine, number 19. And then next up is uh, one of my very favorite inks, KWZ Standard Monarch, which I just had... Um, Pen friend KS send me more of this ink. I was just like treasuring the sample. And now she has sent me this little 20 mil bottle and it's like my treasure on my ink shelf. My like number one treasure. I just love it. I, I can't uh, find a place to purchase the ink, but thank you, thank you so much. Um, it's a beautiful kind of a deep and vibrant orange. And then next is... Uh, one that I just talked about on another video. It's uh, Colorverse Matter, and I got it in this tiny little, uh, well, it's a sample, and it comes in the little beautiful Colorverse bottle, just in case you didn't see that video. It's like a little baby, and how it compares with the uh, 15 mil is like this. This is a 15, and this is the 5. So I consider it a sample, but it's going to have a gorgeous keepsake bottle when, when the sample's empty, um, and it is a gray and I love gray. And I also, after I realized I also have uh, more of the uh, Lambrus Slate, which was sent to me by a pen friend too. And uh, if I had remembered that yesterday, I might've tried that one first. Um, but this has complexity in it and it seems like it has a lot of water resistance. So I was super excited about this one. Okay, next up is uh, Birmingham Electron. I just cut out part of the name because I just need to abbreviate those names. And it's, um, I think it's in their new formulary because it's now being made here, I think, in the United States. But don't quote me. I need to study that more. But at last I heard they had three new blue inks out, and my pen friend sent me a sample of each one. So thank you, pen friend CK, for the sample there. It's gorgeous. It's very vibrant. It kind of reminds me of Hawaii Blue almost. And, uh, Wow, and that that I'm referring to KWZ Hawaii Blue, but I'd have to look at them side by side to, to know for sure. Now, here is one that um, you will see in another video because it was part of my July red ink study, and it's Diamine Wine Divine. It's a shimmer ink. I should pick this up, but I uh, probably will just to show you. It's got gold shimmer, and I fell in love with the ink, so I decided to go ahead and continue with it. I have an awful time getting them back straight after I do these things but hopefully that's good enough oh dear I shouldn't have touched it okay so um ink number what were you on ink number seven is Birmingham inks south side oh wait I didn't say okay that was from pen friend ks as well so same pen friend that sent the uh, kwz um monarch I have a sample of this beautiful shimmer ink. Okay, and on to ink seven, uh, Birmingham ink, Southside Market, Boysenberry. I, I, if I was doing that now, I would just put Boysenberry because they do abbreviate on their samples too. And this is something that, that I got a sample from Penfriend SV. I got, I think, two samples of it, and I'm confused, but I know that I was really interested in this, and I hope they bring it back. So, um... Birmingham, if you're listening, please, it may be back for now. I don't check their website daily because I'm trying to not spend any pen allowance. But um, 
I, I've got it. I've got a peanut butter jar now started so, for savings um, in the hobby. Okay, and last but not least is the Twisby Blue Black that I was talking about. Lots of water resistance, and um, I just am excited about this ink because I like how they're making their inks. They seem to flow super well, and they clean out super super well. They're just like well behaved, is how I describe them. But then when you get the uh, water resistance too that adds another dimension so I'm excited about that okay so next I'm gonna come back and show you uh, do a little bit of a writing sample okay here we are now, I debated doing this ahead and I almost did but uh, there may be times where it stays in focus and you can see it but I do recognize that I'm technically challenged so I please pardon me but uh, if this continues to be a problem I'll go ahead and do it ahead of time and just hold them up and show you so first up here we are with the moon man m600 s um, in the tiger's eye with that beautiful uh, Robert Oster gold antiqua so moon man m600 s <clears throat> with a broad goulet nib on it and Robert Oster Gold Antiqua Antiqua Whoa, I'm not sure how to say that now I, it's not exactly a match to the pen although it certainly is nice with some of the highlights but I felt like it was very appropriate for this pen what do you think? I think it's very pretty and it's also very hard to show there okay I wanted to show you the glimmer this is a very wet nib and pen so um, the ink will be drying for a little while but it's gorgeous isn't it okay so next is the beautiful Twisby Diamond 580 in the purple um, and this was the pen friend gift and it has a stub nib on it and I'm super excited about this I'm gonna leave two squares <laughs> spaces I wrote down um, this is the Tasha Murasaki, uh, and I just love this ink. <clears throat> okay, so Twisby, whoops. I've only written just a slight bit with this. I just got these pens inked up, so. It's Diamond 580. I have issues with, you know, holding the pen wrong with a stub nib, so I just have to keep practicing. Uh, lots more. That's why I've been using them for letter writing a lot to just sort of practice. Tasha Murasaki. I always want to add that shikaboo on the back, but this is not Pilot Ink. It's uh, whoops. I'm trying to show you how wet that is, but I'm afraid I'm just gonna like rock the boat and make everybody dizzy. It's tough with my eyesight, too. I can't hardly see what I'm doing. Okay, so next up is the uh, the Twisby Eco with a broad nib, and I have the KWZ Monarch. Um, this is the yellow pen, but of course, I just like uh, the look of the pen so much, even though I don't like yellow inks, that I thought I'll just use whatever ink I want to in it and start getting over my <laughs> matchy-matchy thing. So this is Twisby Eco. I'm going to put yellow so I'll remember with a broad nib <clears throat> and the KWZ Monarch. This is, it's a limited edition ink um, and it's from uh, Fanto Plumo. I hope I'm going to say that right or even have the right words because I didn't look it up today. Um, but I know that it's extremely hard to find. It's, it's not being made right now. So, okay. So next is the Twisby Eco Clear with um, with the Colorverse Matter in it, and it's a medium nib. I got them kind of out of order, but I think they're in order with the panels, so that I don't think that makes any sense. Okay, so Twisby Eco Clear with a medium nib and I really wanted this for my bullet journal I'm gonna take just a little break from the Twisby Mini and use this pen and see how it goes in there um, I usually use that Graf Von Faber-Castell um, stone gray and I'll keep 
the pen inked up with that too, but I want to kind of compare these. And I don't know if it was my imagination, but it seems like when you write with uh, Colorverse Matter, it darkens a little as it dries, uh, and that's neat. Uh, I don't know if that's really true. I haven't written with it enough yet to tell, but it seems to be a nice medium gray. Not too dark, not too light. I think it's going to be really nice. Okay, so next up is the Diplomat Magnum in the prismatic purple with a broad nib and it's got that really bright Birmingham Electron ink in it. So let's see how we do. Oh, it's just nice and juicy. That that ink really agrees with this nib which is wet to begin with, I think. A flowy, I guess. Diplomat Magnum. I'm going to just put prism PP for prismatic purple broad nib. Wow, it's just like it's a fire hose, basically, and I, that's how I like it, and I use Tamoy River paper anyway for my letters. That's what it's for. Um, I couldn't get away with this, I'm pretty sure, in my bullet journal, although I'll try it. <clears throat> it, it would be pretty intense. I don't know how the Loistrum paper would do. Okay, so it's Electron. There's a lot more to the name of that ink, but that's the primary name, and... Uh, I did want to put new, kind of to designate that this is not from the old Birmingham inks that were made elsewhere and so on. Okay, so next up is the Lamy Vista, and I've got that beautiful shimmer ink, the Diamine Wine Divine. I hope it'll write, because I kind of switched nibs several times, uh, but I settled on the broad nib, of course. I just can't get away from broad nibs. So this is... Uh, Lamy Vista. I'm hesitating because I broke my rules. I kind of usually roll the pen a little and give it a chance for the shimmer to move around. But basically, if you can see, there is quite a bit of shimmer up in that section. Let's see. Wow, I thought I had better lighting, but sometimes it's just my eyes. I'm looking out over the top of reading glasses because just hard to see but anyway there's a lot of shimmer collected in there so who knows uh, this is a new to me ink but it's beautiful it's the broad nib and we know it's clear vista okay so it's diamine sometimes I forget as I'm going along I tried in the beginning to say who sent the sample but I always type it in the um, notes in the description because it is hard for me to remember when I get talking Wine Divine, and this is from Pen Friend KS, but I, I'm not going to go back and review because I already did say that before I listed all the names. Okay, so that's really nice. Okay, it's going to be really pretty. The question will be, will enough of the shimmer show up on the letter? And it will if I'll remember to agitate the pen. So this is the Twisby Diamond 580 Clear that I've had a long time, but with the new nib unit, the bro broad nib unit on it. And it has got Birmingham boysenberry in it. Okay. I should be looking to see if you can even see what I'm doing. I will review the video just to make sure. Okay, so Twisby. Diamond 580. With the broad nib. I'm not exactly thrilled with all of the Twisby broad nibs, though. Um, I'm happier with the broad nibs that come on the go, either that or it's psychological, or it's a flow thing. I'm not sure yet. I'm trying to figure it out, but I want it broader, so maybe I'm a double broad person. I don't know. <laughs> Birmingham, and we're just going to say boysenberry. There's something about Southside Market, I think, in the name, but but I just don't have the space to put it on. There, that's nice and wet. Uh, definitely a, 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 a bump up from a medium for sure, but I guess I'm getting so fussy. I just want them so broad. Okay, and then last but not least, pen number eight is the Twisby Go in Sapphire, and this does have a medium nib on it. I'm hoping, and I'm, I think that this will write in the Loistrum without any bleed through, because this ink is kind of neat. Um, and I, I just, that's my theory, so I'll let you know how that goes. Twisby Go uh, Sapphire. 
with medium nib. Because right, I want it for note taking, I want it for bullet journaling. And it's the Twisby Blue Black. Okay, it, it's like, it's good, it's wet, but not too wet. And I'm thinking that it may not bleed through the Loistrum. That would be really a nice benefit if it doesn't. So that's the lineup for August 2020. Oops, making so you could see all, all eight of them. And uh, I am excited about these. I think it's going to be great. You could see that there's an emphasis, a uh, broad stub, broad, 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 broad. You know, I'm going to be doing quite a bit of letter writing. So that's why I purposely tried to do that, making sure that um, it's, I think it's just these two, right? Yeah, I've just got the gray and the nice uh, blue black in the medium nibs. And the rest are nice and broad so that I can do uh, plenty of letter writing. Okay, so I'll be right back with the report card from July. Okay, here we are. Now, just as a preface, in case you haven't seen my other pen friend uh, video letter, um, July was sort of a, uh, off the rails a little with, you know, me having a re-injury or a re-flare up of my back and a hurricane and the COVID-19 exploded here in Texas. So I didn't get to write as much as I normally do and I got behind on my letter writing. So some of my pens actually dried up, but we'll talk about that. That does not usually happen to me. Um, this The first one was the Jinhao 599 with a fine Moonman mini nib. I swapped the nib out, and it is it is a number five nib anyway, um, with KWZ Thief's Red. And I gave it a B minus because it was a nice matchup, but I wasn't happy with the flow and the nib kind of... I actually would have been happier with the nib that came on it that I smoothed out uh, rather than that. Uh, Moonman Mini, which gave a little more feedback, and I like that on the Moonman Mini little uh, little pocket pens, but I didn't like it on the 599 because I'm not used to it. But it's really not the pen's fault. <laughs> I'm the one that changed the nib. Then next was the Twisby Go um, with the broad nib in sapphire with Robert Oster Blue Denim, which I thought was going to be my favorite. And I did love how it looked but it was dry and the pen did dry out in between a little on me. It was really quick and easy to, to go ahead and get it uh, to write again, but it is a little different because those Go pens have the, uh, the spring mechanism and so you can't just, uh, <laughs> you know, you don't want to give it a... So what I, if you went ahead and you tried to make a little ink go down, you'd make a mess everywhere. So what I did was, all I did was take it over to a little uh, ink miser cup and extract the ink out and then back in again, refill it basically and clean the nib. So it was a pain whenever I let it dry out like that, which I think the ink might be slightly dry because no other pen I could, I mean, no other ink I've tried so far in the Twisby Goes has not, none of the other ones have done that. But I love the way it looks, so it was worth it. I had to do it two or three times. But that's because if I waited and it was four days between writing a letter with it, that's what, you know, I could kind of expect that, but it had never happened before. But I still gave it a B plus because I loved how it looked, and it looked really nice in several pen friend letters. So next up was my all-time favorite here, Jen Hao X750. Uh, it I was the silver one, I think, and I need to write that down. Um, yeah, it was the silver one, just so I keep track. I probably shifted around all the guts of that pen anyway, but, um, with Annie's Purple Mix, a gorgeous, bright, vibrant purple that's made from Diamine Bougainvillea, and, um, I think it's Parker Blue Black that she mixes together, and I gave it an A++. It had super color and flow. It never dried out, no matter how long. I Every time I picked it up, I thought, okay, this is going to be the time because I hadn't written a letter in four or five days, and boom, it started up every single time. So that was a good combination in terms of the um, the nib, the the feed, and the, the ink. It was just awesome. I can't say enough good about it. Then um, next up was the Jinhao X750 with the 1.5 uh, Goulet nib. That's that blue blue swirl. I need to be writing that down. I think it's important. <clears throat> uh, just so that I know which pen it was. 
<clears throat> when I look back a long time from now. Uh, so it's the 1.5 Goulet stub, diamine blue black. And I gave it an A. I'm still having trouble holding the pen right, but the flow uh, could have been a little bit better. But I'm spoiled because Florida Blue in this exact same setup just is a fire hose. So that's what I was comparing it against. And there just was no comparison. This was drier in that setup. But it was still really nice, and I used it a lot for letter writing. Okay, the Fabric Castile... Andaro with the fine nib with SBRE brown. I gave it a B minus because it was probably my fault leaving it too long, but I did get some nib crud on it, and I'm not sure if I can show you. I'll try. And that's normal with quite a few brown inks. So, and I love the ink enough that that does not, you know, that does not bother me. It doesn't normally happen because I stay right on top of my pens, but it was a topsy turvy month of you know, cuckoo crazy stuff happening, so I didn't stay on top of the pen enough. And um, I thought it needed a wider nib because I, I enjoy seeing SBRE Brown coming out of a broad nib. So that's, a, you know, something to keep in mind for myself. Um, but still, it wasn't the pen's fault, so I didn't grade it down too far. And then the Lamy Safari with the fine nib, that's this one. Um, that really surprised me. I had Lamy Crystal Obsidian in it, and I could tell that it was dry just by the smear I made, but, um, and I am so used to Noodler's Heart of Darkness that I didn't think I was going to like this, and it was more of an experiment, but I have used it all month long for labeling in my red ink study, and um, I'll show you that on another video. The, the whole chart was labeled up with this, and I used it for note-taking and small little, whenever I wanted a black, and I gave it an, an A. I said dry, but excellent for my note taking and labeling. Yeah, you don't need a fire hose when you when you're really wanting to make sure it doesn't bleed through cheaper paper and stuff. So that was really nice. Um, super surprised and happy. So then the Gen How 992 with the food aid nib in the transparent blue that did dry out because I left it too long with the Twisby Prairie Green. I gave it a B minus though because when it was working, it was extremely pretty. It wasn't super readable, but it was nice. You know, it was really nice. But in retrospect, I think um, I, it was just one of those months where I just let things go too long, you know. And I was testing out a different red ink and pen every day, so what could I really expect? Um, and then last but not least, the Twisby Go in the stub nib in the smoke edition that was the birmingham golden gazette that's a real nice complex ink and i gave it an a and i really like it and it's still going so um there i'll have to question myself whether to clean that out or keep it in my secondary pen case um, my very favorite for the month was Jen Hao x750 um, that silver one that i put the annie's mix that was oh my gosh and it's it's just about dry it's just about out of ink um, and it's a temptation just to go ahead and refill that again. But will I give enough attention to the new, the eight new pens if I do that? No. So I need to behave. And that's, that's what this whole program is about is to get me to try more inks and not just keep on with only my favorites, but to, you know, to give a nice rotation, I, I think is what I'm trying to say. Then my second favorite was that Twisby Go in uh, with the 1.1, the Birmingham Golden Gazette. It, it, of course, did not dry out no matter how long I set it down. Um, and I never let it set for two weeks or anything, but four or five days was not out of the question with the craziness we had. So those were my two favorites. And uh, let's bring the pens back over. Um, I am excited about August because I'm going to put kind of a, a priority and a... Uh, emphasis on letter writing during August but I'll talk about that more when I do the red ink study but I wanted to get this out because a lot of people mentioned that this is the one they wait for so this is the last day of July as I'm uh, you know filming but for many of you it'll be later in the day on the 31st or, or into August before you see this so um, what do you think what what do you think is the best prospect for this month I uh I'm so excited. Let me flip to my little test. Uh, just looking at this, I know, I'm pretty sure that I'm going to be really crazy about this one and this one and this one. 
um, the two that I'm using as note takers and bullet journal, that's going to depend how it behaves on the Loistrum. And definitely, I think the Birmingham inks hardly ever do any kind of nonsense like drying out. So I think that Electron is going to be great. I'm not sure on the Wine Divine whether it will stay, um, you know, mixed enough, but it's a gorgeous under color anyway. And then that Twisby um, boysenberry in the in the Diamond 580, I think, will be great too. I don't think that that I think that'll be unstoppable. See, and I really am becoming a Twisby person. <laughs> I can see that, but it could never be my only brand because I love the number six nibs. So, but I also just absolutely love demonstrators. So probably a um, I would never be able to settle on just one brand, but it comes pretty close. To, I'm a, definitely a Twisby girl. So, what are you inking up with? I, I really would love to hear about it. And I've just got over 30 minutes. Oh, I hope this will upload and be proper and be in focus. But I'll check that out first before I uh, impose it on you. And uh, just have a great month of August. Uh, I hope you're all staying well and happy and healthy in uh, these challenging times. So, I'll see you later. And thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.